to our, oh, pardon me. There we go. We, we can't live stream it to the website at this, at this moment. So it will be available at the, on the same, uh, at the same site um, later, but we're not, not at this moment. Pardon me. Getting some feedback here. That's all right. Okay. Let us begin. My child, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your ear to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search it as your hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk blamelessly, guarding the paths of justice and preserving the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Come, let us worship the God of wisdom and compassion. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In confirmation, you learn that the first responsibility of membership is to proclaim the good news in word and deed. And sometimes we need to be reminded that God's love is active, that it reaches far beyond the depths of human emotions and it demands a deeper effort of placing oneself aside for a greater message. On our own, we are incapable of reaching this level of compassion, but with the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are enabled to exemplify by word, action, and deed incredible feats of love a love that defines us as being in relationship with God and not ruled by our fears. You see, the world tells us to hate those that offend us and to desire the worst for them that harm us, to amend vengeance with likened revenge. God's love, however, is the complete opposite. We learn in Leviticus, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people but love your neighbor as yourself. And so we have a choice to either love as God requires us to or not. That is what it means to have free will. So what's love got to do with it? Love is the driving force in achieving the unimaginable. It is the way for us to have a closer relationship to the creator of all things. 
Love is the compelling force that says through the mercy and grace of God that we are truly capable of extending the same love to one another. If you just take a look around you this morning, you will see many people who are extending the love of God to someone else. Go ahead, take a look around. See who's sitting around you, in front of you, behind you, beside you. These are people who are living extraordinarily selfless lives. People who have put the needs of others before their own. Perhaps the needs of a mother who has Alzheimer's or the needs of a child who suffers from mental illness or the needs of an ailing parent or the needs of the hungry, the needs of people all around the world. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have life eternal. And this is the good news that we proclaim in word and in deed. Pastor John Vianney, an 18th century pastor, once said, Love for our neighbor consists of three things, to desire the greater good of everyone, to do what good we can when we can, and to bear, excuse, and hide others' faults. The kind of love that Jesus is talking about is the sacrificial love of the cross and not the superficial love of the world. So as you begin your new life as members of First Presbyterian Church, Your voices and your actions are needed to help us to proclaim the love of God in Christ Jesus. And now is your time to show the love of God in whatever form it presents itself. And may any obstacles and barriers that you encounter be removed through the power of prayer and through attentiveness to uh, to the disciplines of the faith. And in so doing, May God's mercy, God's grace, and God's love be a sustaining force and focus as you seek to live in a world that needs to be loved and that needs your love. Amen. Batista, Karen Daly, Kate Murphy, Allison Onegian, John Onegian, Kaylee Ropata, Charlie Simpson, Jack Sudo, and Chris Weaver, who have reaffirmed the baptismal covenant into which they were baptized. They have publicly professed their faith and they're ready to assume greater responsibility in the life of the church and God's mission in the world. Where did he go? (laughs) Good morning. My name is Paul Lundreiner, and I'm the music director here at First Presbyterian Church. But today, I'm here to talk about Antonio Batista, who I had the pleasure of uh, mentoring during this confirmation process. Antonio is an amazing, amazing young man, a wonderful student, musician, brother, and son. And during this process of confirmation, we really got to know each other and really got a deep chance to delve into both of our spirituality and our Um, understanding of Christianity, religion, the Bible, and so on. And one thing I would like to really highlight about Antonio is the fact that he really understands that although confirmation has a set amount of time uh, where it begins, we go through the process, and then we come to the end of it, the process of spiritual development is one that's ongoing, continuous. And as we looked at the lessons and discuss the various scriptures and meanings behind them, it became very apparent that he recognized that spirituality is not something that begins or ends with confirmation, but is an ongoing process that you continue throughout your life as a Christian. 
And I think that Antonio really will continue to discover more, to refine his understanding, and to truly engage in his spirituality as the years go by. And so it's a great pleasure to present him here for confirmation. Hi, First Presbyterian Church of Ramsey. I'd like to welcome Kiernan Daly to our congregation. She's been a wonderful person to get to know. She loves the outdoors like I do, and I think she'll be a wonderful addition to our church family. Welcome, Kiernan. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Waldeck, and I had the pleasure of mentoring three uh, students this year for confirmation. Um, the first student that I was able to work with was Kate. Kate Murphy and I met at Smith School in the middle school, and we had a couple classes together. I, as her teacher, she is my student, and she was always such a joy to be around. Um, Kate is very cheerful, positive, and she's a goofy girl. So no matter what kind of day you're having, um, she can always turn it around. Um, Kate has really grown in faith by learning to give gratitude um, for every day and thank God for each day's blessings. Thankfulness comes from having a relationship with Jesus and understanding God's love for us. We should always be thankful in tough situations and circumstances because we already have victory through Jesus Christ. My next student is John Onegian. Like all three of my students, I've met them all through um, Smith School, middle school, being a teacher, and it was, it was such a great way to get to know each and every one of the kids. John is very smart, outgoing, and very, very curious. Um, throughout our sessions, I found myself not only teaching him a lot about the word of the Lord, but I found that he was also teaching me a lot from what he was learning in class. John has really grown in faith by learning that God tests us um, with many trials throughout every day and out, throughout our own walk of life. We learned this specifically in the book of Jobs, which we talked about a lot. John has learned to love God through it all and continue to have faith in God as he overcomes his own trials in life. The last student I had is John's sister, Allison. Um, Allison is very caring, friendly, and she's probably the most dependable person I have ever met. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, she will always be there for you. She is somebody who um, will help you and just no judgment, no judgment. She is open arms and she is just a great person to be around. And I know that I can always count on her. Um, Allison has really grown in faith by learning to fully trust in God and believe that everything happens for a reason. God knows what kind of curves you're going to experience in life. And even when it feels like nobody understands, he is always there for you. It was my absolute honor and pleasure to mentor each and every one of these students. And I can't wait for you to each become a part of this church. Congratulations. Hello, church family. Um, I am... Kaylee Robotor's mentor, and it was both my privilege and my pleasure to go through this confirmation process with her. I have known Kaylee her entire life, and part of that is because she grew up in this church just like my kids did. And part of it is also because her mom happens to be one of my very close friends, and that friendship has meant the world to me through the years. And through that, I was able to watch Kaylee and her brothers and sisters grow up in another wonderful, loving family. And that's been really special for me. So when it came time to um, be part of her confirmation process, I was just so honored that Kaylee asked me and I got to share this part of her life with her. She's a vital part of our church. She has grown up in those hallways and she is now a beautiful, mature, passionate, compassionate, fun, loving, caring young woman. I've also seen her grow as an older sister because in the beginning it was just Kaylee and then she welcomed Cameron and then she welcomed Peyton and then they welcomed Brady and I've seen her take care and nurture all of those brothers and sisters in her family and just do a wonderful job at it. 
And that's a little bit different between Kaylee and Charlie because Charlie's the baby in our family and Kaylee's the oldest. And it's been fun to see the difference in the girls with that. And we did get to spend a lot of time with the girls together because Karen and I decided that it would be really fun for the two of them to go through confirmation together. So all of our meetings were the four of us in a booth at Panera with our readings in front of us. And one of the best things we did is that every time we read the passage in the beginning with all the words that we didn't understand half of them, um, Kaylee and I would always pick out one word and circle it. And we swore that we were gonna put all those crazy words in her um, faith statement later because we thought they sounded really impressive even though we didn't know what half of them meant. And then unfortunately that didn't really happen because you know the world kind of changed for all of us and we didn't get to go on meeting like we had been but up until then we had really really special times together over those um lunches and sugar cookies and drinks at panera and karen and i both got to listen to our two girls um talk about god in their life and what that meant to them and how it is for them um, living their life these days as girls of faith. And when they listen to that voice inside of them and what that voice tells them and how they know that that's God speaking to them and giving them guidance and letting him know that he is always there in their life if they just choose to believe in him and trust in him and talk to him and pray to him. And it was really wonderful to listen to them open up about their faith and their journey and their struggles and their triumphs. And it was really one of the most special times of my life with my daughter, but also with Kaylee, who has become just such a special young woman in my life. So Kaylee, I'm so proud of you today, reaching the end of your confirmation journey but I know that it's just the beginning of your continued involvement in this church and whatever church you end up in the future and your life of faith um, and a life that holds just infinite possibilities because you are a fabulous young woman with everything ahead of her. So I love you, I'm so proud of you, and congratulations on your confirmation. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karen Robitor, and I had the pleasure of mentoring Charlie Simpson this year for confirmation. Charlie is a senior at Ramsey High School. She's a member of the marching band. She's on the swim team. Um, she dances uh, outside of Ramsey. She's a member of the drama club at Ramsey. I've had the privilege of seeing her in several productions. And um, I would say Ch Charlie's true passion is volunteering. She has been to Peru. She has um, been volunteering at Valley Hospital and doing all kinds of things with her mom, Meryl. And Charlie attends our mission trip with us over the summer at up in Maine for Mate. And that's really where I got to know Charlie super well. We've always been family friends, but um, at Mate, I really got to know Charlie. And through this whole process, it has just been awesome watching her grow and question her faith and just through conversation, seeing how much she realized that the Holy Spirit and God works through her and the things that she does and making decisions and, um, you know, just being the person that she is. I am so excited for Charlie to take the next step in her faith journey, and I know that she is going to do wonderful things. My name is Polly Fitzsimmons, and I'm the mentor for Jack Sudall. Welcome, Jack to our church family. You have taken time out to delve into the Bible with your heart and mind and spirit for all these many months. I couldn't have, it couldn't have been easy. All you need is another female's assistant. I realize that your mom and your sisters, you all, you're all surrounded with a lot of helpful woman, women. The topics you picked from the discussion list helped our meetings to be quite challenging, since your answers were original and very creative. Thank you for jolting me into new thinking and research. Jack's character influences his parents, Andrea and Rob, 
his twin sisters, Samantha and Sabrina, and the discipline of Boy Scouts with his father as leader, and the sport of track has served him well. May you always rely on these and the Holy Spirit of our living God. I leave you, Jack, with this verse from 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For our sake, he made the sinless one a victim of sin, a victim for sin, so that in him we might become the uprightness of God. Thank you, Jack, for this learning experience. Good morning. This year I participated in the mentorship program with my nephew, Christopher. Christopher is a freshman in Indian Hills High School. He is uh, athletic, he's smart, he's funny, he's caring. And I think Christopher is turning into a well-rounded young man who's ready to participate more in the church community and explore that aspect of his beliefs. Christopher and I had a extended chance to participate in this program due to COVID lockdowns. And that actually made it a little bit easier on us, um, given that we're family and we live so close, we could see each other much easier than I'm sure other people could. It became apparent to me quickly that Christopher was raised with the influence of my parents, Ron and Pam, his grandparents, and the wonderful example they set of what it means to be a Christian and live your life as a Christian following in the path of Jesus. And I think Christopher already had those values and morals that you need. I think he just needed to connect it to his conscious understanding of why he does those things and how it makes him feel. And I think as soon as Christopher realized that living his life as a Christian and the way Jesus would approve makes him feel good and makes him proud. And I think that was one of the biggest things we learned in the mentorship program. And I think he'll carry that forward with him. I'm excited to see him move forward in the community and hopefully the church is as welcoming to him as uh, they have been in the past to uh, other confirmants. I'm very proud of you, Christopher. Congratulations. And thank you to Steve and the church for allowing us to do this together. If I could ask the confirmation students to stand. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Jesus Christ has chosen you, and in baptism you received the sign and seal of your union with Christ. And he has called you, together with us, into the church, which is his body. Now he has brought you to this time and place so that you may acknowledge the covenant made on your behalf in baptism and to profess your faith in the Lord Jesus and to go out to serve him as faithful disciples. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. And so I ask you, do you confirm the vows taken for you in baptism? If so, answer, I do. And will you love your neighbor as generously as you love yourself? If so, answer, I will. And will you live a whole, healthy life of grace, compassion, community, and hope? If so, answer, I will. And will you be a faithful member of this congregation and participate in its life and mission? If so, answer, I will. And now I invite your family to stand with you and to lay their hands on your shoulder or on your back or on your head. If you need to shuffle around a little bit, that's okay. Come here in the middle, Chris. Get in the middle of everybody there. We'll take just a second. Yeah, if you need to... The weavers want to all... You can come out and and uh, move back a row or two, that's fine. Chris, you've got a great cloud of witnesses there. As do all of you.
you are disciples of Jesus Christ, and he has commissioned you. Live in his love and serve him. For as much as you have made confession of your faith, I do now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great head of the church, admit you into the fellowship of Christ's church. Antonio, Kiernan, Kate, Allison, John, Kaylee, Charlie, Jack, and Chris. You are now disciples of Jesus Christ. Live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I'm just going to ask if we can put the camera on all of them so that we can make sure everybody gets a chance to see this. Let us pray. Faithful God, in baptism you claimed us, and by your Spirit you are working in our lives, empowering us to live a life worthy of your calling. We thank you for leading these young men and women to this time and place of reaffirming the covenant you made with them in their baptism. Establish them in your truth and guide them by your Spirit, that together with all your people they may grow in faith, hope, and love and be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Stephanie. You may remain standing for a moment. Antonio, Kieran, Kate, Allison, John, Kaylee, Charlie, Jack and Chris have expressed their intention to continue in the covenant God made with them in baptism. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you to share with us in the ministry of Christ, for we are all one in him. Please be seated. We'll go to our closing hymn. Before we go, let us give all of our new members a round of applause. The reality is, is that your spiritual journey will be much like this year in confirmation. It will be full of surprises and twists and turns, and we don't always know where we are going to go or where God is going to lead us, or the things that God is going to lead us through. But we know that God will always be present with us, and that the Holy Spirit will always be with us to show us the way. And so as we go back into the world, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.